Hey family, welcome back to another YouTube video. It's Shanique here from Fro Family Travels. And today I wanted to talk to you about a bit of an immigration update for Mexico. So this video is especially for people who are maybe thinking about coming to Mexico on an extended visit. Maybe you're thinking of testing it out as a place to live. So you wanna stay here for a month or two and see if you like like the country, maybe you're a digital nomad or thinking about becoming a digital nomad and um, wanting to stay for three, four, five, six months and making Mexico your base so that you can explore this beautiful country. Well, this video is definitely for you. Hey guys, I'm AJ. I'm Shanique. I'm Tazzy. So in 2018, we quit our jobs to travel the world and live a freedom lifestyle. We wanted to share our journey with you. So welcome to the family. So, what's changed? Well, initially, most people when they came to visit Mexico um, or where they were researching visiting Mexico, we had the understanding or the belief that we as UK citizens, as US citizens, many citizens around the world, we're allowed to stay in Mexico for 180 days or approximately six months. And many people took that as guaranteed. With Mexico, you don't have to apply for your tourist visa in advance. You actually um, fill out what is known as an FMM. I'm gonna insert a picture of the full view, but this is basically the small card that you get uh, when you are on the plane. And actually, usually the cost of the FMN, FMM is covered within your ticket price if you're flying. It's only overland where you may actually have to pay for the FMM. So usually when you're sitting on the plane, you're given a FMM card that you have to fill out and it includes details of where you'll be staying, where you're from, uh, what your intentions are for while your time in Mexico and you fill that out in the plane and that's what you take to immigration to border control and that's what you present to them and they will ask you how many days you want to stay and depending on how many days, days you want to stay you let them know and usually they would just write a number on the FMM card which for majority of people would usually be 180 days regardless of whether you were staying for one week or just on a normal vacation or you actually wanted to utilize the six months you would be given 180 days and even in the past this was always at the discretion of the officer who you were dealing with at the time but majority of people were given 180 days as standard well that isn't happening anymore and what we've noticed is lots and lots of people are reporting the fact that they are asking for a long period of stay and they're not given the length of time that they actually asked for. They're actually given a much shorter period of time. It's been noted from many people that they've only been given seven days, some only 30 days, some 120 days. There doesn't seem to be any real consistency and there hasn't actually been any official word from the Mexican government to say that there's been an official change to the um, tourist visa. So everyone's really, really confused. There seems to be so many comments. People are getting really scared and they're not sure people are canceling plans to come to Mexico because they're scared of what might happen. So. Why does it seem that this is happening? Well, like I said, because there's not been any official word from the government, it's all speculation at the moment and it's anecdotal and just what we're hearing from people who have been coming into Mexico, people who have actually directly asked border control why this is happening. And the general word on the street is a number of reasons why this may be happening. We partly think that it could be due to the fact that there are a lot of people arriving from countries like Haiti, from Venezuela, from Argentina, 
Obviously, because Mexico does have one of the most relaxed requirements, considering the current world events, you don't need to test, you don't need vaccines, you don't need to quarantine when you come here. So tourism is up during this period as well. So Mexico is seeing a lot more people coming in than they are used to. And many of those people are overstaying those visas and they're not using the proper system for, for people who want to become official residents of Mexico, which would be to apply for a temporary visa or apply for a permanent visa. Many people are taking advantage of that 180 days, staying longer and not reporting themselves to immigration, not going through the proper channels. Um, and also they're noting that some digital nomads are doing what is quite common in the digital nomad the world which is known as border run so maybe they're using their 180 days they're leaving the country for a few days and then coming back and some people i've heard people doing this for like three five seven years just doing border runs back and forth every 180 days and they've got a way with living in mexico without going through the official channels so my understanding is that immigration is kind of trying to put a stop to all of these people's over overstaying and so that's why they're starting to crack down. Because of this, it means that anyone coming to Mexico at this current period of time is no longer guaranteed 180 days. In fact, you were never guaranteed 180 days. It was just something that was standardly given um, and people kind of got used to it. And now it seems like that is definitely changing. And this FMM is really important. And normally along in this gray section here is where your officer would stamp and tell you exactly how many days you were given. And like I said, usually it'd be 180 days, but sometimes people take it for granted and they think they've been given for 180 days and they haven't looked and it's not until a little bit later that they've actually opened up their passport and they see, oh my gosh, I've only been given seven days. And I have actually seen people report that they've overstayed, they didn't even realize that they were only given seven days and now they're stuck and they don't know what to do. So if you do find yourself in Mexico and you've been given a much shorter time than you originally planned for, what can you do? Is it possible to extend that? To be honest, there's so much hearsay. It's really hard to give a definitive answer to this. Uh, we have heard of people who have been able to just go to the immigration office and say, Look, I don't know why I was given seven days. I have this, you know, I have my accommodation booked for two months um, and they've been able to sort that out at the immigration office. Um, but I've also heard lawyers who comment in the Facebook groups that I'm in, like expats in Mexico groups who have actually said that no, it's impossible to actually extend your stay if you were given a shortened stay. Um, so it's really hard to say, like I said, because the government haven't actually put out an official notice, we don't actually know what the official word is. And I would say you have to be very careful, especially if someone is promising to extend your stay for a fee because you want to make sure that you're not gonna run into being scammed. So what should you do if you're thinking of coming to Mexico and you want to stay for an extended period of time, maybe at least a couple of months, maybe you'd like to explore Mexico for the full six months that you hope you would be entitled to. Well, there's a few things that may help um, your case with the immigration officer in getting them to give you 180 days but just know like I said this is anecdotal and there's no guarantees it will actually work for you so one of the things that you could do is you can print off um, your accommodation details show that you actually have somewhere booked for the entire six months duration of your stay or however long for 90 days stay but for the entire duration that you want to be in Mexico have somewhere booked and paid for that you can show the immigration officer on arrival so they can see that you can actually financially cover the cost of your stay you can also provide your bank statement if you would like and show that you have the funds in order to cover the time and duration that you would like to stay in Mexico the third thing that you can do is also have flights books 
um, and be able to show your booking details for an onwards flight or a return flight back to where you came from so that the immigration officer can say see that you have intentions of leaving the country at the end of your stay. So what if you're not sure about where you're going to go after Mexico or you haven't decided exactly when you plan to leave? Well, maybe you want to think about booking a flight using onwardflights.com. And what they do is they are a legit website, but they allow you to book a flight and hold a ticket for a period of, I think it's between 48 and 72 hours. And so you can book that a few days before you're coming into Mexico and they will actually give you a real ticket that you can show to the officer to show that you're going to be leaving after a certain period of time. But obviously bear in mind that that ticket will expire after um, a period of time and then you will have to book your real flight when the time comes. The main thing that I would say is don't try to play the system. Ask for what you want. If you want to stay for 180 days, then the best thing to do is to ask for 180 days because it seems that a lot of people are being given what they asked for. So if you say, oh, I'm gonna put down 60 days, but I'm actually going to just utilize the 180, that's not gonna work. If you put down 60 days, it is very probable that the officer is only going to give you 60 days. So if you want to stay for 180 days, write that on the form. There's no guarantees you'll be given it, but you've got a better chance of, doing, of getting it that way. Worst case scenario, have a backup plan. Because if you ask for 180 days, especially if you have been to Mexico a number of times and the officer can see you've done a few border runs, um, or you've been to Mexico maybe six times in the last two years, it may look a little bit suspicious. So, so I would say just be honest and have a backup plan just in case. I do know people that hoped that they were gonna get their 180 days and only ended up with seven days, which is absolutely soul crushing, especially maybe if you had accommodation booked and paid for, um, then obviously you're gonna run into a lot of problems. So you may want to think about having a backup plan just in case you don't get what you asked for. It has also been suggested that those who are coming in and maybe they're dressed inappropriately, maybe they look like a backpacker, look like someone who might overstay a visa. Those are the people that are more likely to be targeted. So some people have said the best thing to do is to dress well, whatever that means. Um, I was actually wearing this when we came into Mexico. So I don't know what dressing well means, but um, yeah, that might be something that you want to take into consideration is, you know, your approach, how you, how you look to the officer could determine the, the amount of days that you're given. What we're hearing is people who enter from Mexico City are generally not being given more than 30 days. Um, I've heard rare cases where people have said they were given 60 days, but a lot of people that are coming in from Mexico City definitely seem to not be given the same 180 days as they are giving in other airports. So the final thing to know is actually when you arrive into Mexico, you've got through the whole airport process, you've settled in and now you're out and about enjoying your time in this beautiful country. One of the things that we're hearing people say is you need to always have your passport and your FMM card with you at all times because immigration are actually on the streets. They are doing spot checks to make sure that everyone is legally allowed to be in the country. We're hearing especially that this is happening on the ADO or ADO buses, um, where people board to go to different cities. It's happening on the highway, but I've even heard that it's happening at 7.30 a.m. on the beaches as well. People are being stopped and asked for their passports. They're being asked for their FMM so immigration can see 
that they haven't overstayed their visa. And if you don't have the evidence to um, prove your stay, then or prove that you um, are entitled to stay in the country at this time, then it's very possible that you could get arrested there and then until you can prove that you have the right to be in the country. And we are definitely hearing about people being arrested and having to call their friends to get them to rush in their passport to show that, that they have the right to be in Mexico. So we are being encouraged to keep our passports and our FMMs on us at all times, just in case, which I know is not necessarily ideal. Usually we're told the opposite, don't take your passports out and about with you. But in this situation, you may want to do so just to make sure that you're always covered just in case. We did hear as well that there should be an official update from the Mexican government and that they have been considering changing the allowance that they give for, to, for tourists to come and stay in the country. But as of yet, we haven't heard anything just yet. So we'll just have to wait and see that if that happens. So for now, all we have is to go, all we have to go by is by what people are telling us and what we're reading in the Facebook groups. So I hope that's been really helpful for you and please feel free to drop any questions. I'm definitely no expert, but I can definitely help where I can and give you some ideas of our experience and what other people have been telling us. And I hope that you enjoy your stay in Mexico, however long you plan to come here for. And I look forward to seeing you again in the next video. Take care guys, bye.